Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Sure. All right. Um, good evening, folks. Seeing that it's uh, 7.03, I'd like to call this meeting to order. And um, <clears throat> before we get started, if anybody's recording it, I know WATD is recording it, and also we're recording it um, on our John Roser from uh, SETV. And of course, um, Boston Globe is also reporting. Okay, good. Um, I'd like to have um, an acceptance of the agenda. So moved. Nope. Second. Seconded by Mr. Morton. Norton. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, moving on, I'd like to go to the walk-in period. Are there any walk-ins tonight? Fair enough. Seeing none, I'd like to move on then to um, what is a discussion vote to set the residential factor. Can we start sooner than later? Is that okay, gentlemen? It's scheduled for 7.05, but uh, we're ready. give you more time to talk. How's that? Sure. From the Board of Assessors. Uh, it's a Good evening, Mr. Chairman. On behalf of the Board of Assessors, I'm Brian Sullivan. Sitting next to me is uh, Steve Jarzembowski, the assessor and situate, and uh, also with me this evening, Mr. Fred Avila and uh, Mr. Stephen Gard, the other members of the Board of Assessors. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, we're here tonight, as you know, to set the residential tax rate. Uh, as we've discussed in years past, uh, we currently uh, follow the factor of one, which means that we have a single tax rate between residential and commercial property. At a meeting of the Board of Assessors tonight, we took a vote and again recommend that the selectmen follow the factor of one. Again, if I may, Mr. Chairman, sure. the sure. main reason, I guess, for that, Brian, is that we don't have a, a, a great amount of commercial property, uh, not enough to make a difference. That's that correct. Point. We have about 95% residential mm -hmm. and about a uh, little bit over 3% commercial. Mm -hmm. The rest is split between industrial and personal property. So it would not make sense to have a factor of two with a different rate <coughs> between commercial and residential. What that would do is that it would drive up the cost of owning and operating a business in situate. Uh, and if you uh, look at the, uh, the tax rate, if the tax rate for fiscal year 2011 was uh, $11.25 per thousand, uh, essentially what that would do is that it, with a 5% shift, it would increase the commercial tax bill about $391. For the 10% shift, it would increase the commercial <coughs> tax bill about $790. So as, uh, as the assessor uh, was saying earlier, you know, a gallon of milk at Ronnie Shones would cost us 20 bucks if that were the case. So. We don't have a large industrial tax base. Questions from the board? Tony. Just a, a couple <clears throat> uh, quick comments. Um, the, um, the one thing, I, I spoke with Steve earlier today and went over some stuff and some things that were interesting were that Situate actually has the lowest tax rate in all of the surrounding communities in our area. Last year, I believe that was the data you gave me, it was 10.56. Correct compared to surrounding towns that go up to as high as $15. Um, and so that's, you know, a very strong thing about our community. We're able to provide the services that we've been able to at, at the lowest tax rate amongst all of the surrounding communities, Duxbury, Marshfield, Cohasset, Pembroke, Rockland, um, Hanover. Um, so I was really, really pleased with that. The other comment that I was going to make is, you know, if we were to change this ratio, it would kind of go against all the other stuff, all the green initiatives we're doing now, all the economic development stuff that we're doing now. So, um, you know, it would be, it would be a, a prohibitive measure to get, get uh, um, commercial stuff to come into our town to help build the tax base in general. And actually, it's a disincentive. And earlier, uh, we were talking, uh, even in the town of Foxborough, which has an 80-20 split between residential and commercial, Foxborough also follows a factor of one which shows the overreaching power of the crafts. <laughs> they, they pay a residential tax rate for their palace uh, there at... Uh, so, want a motion? Sure. Mm -hmm. Please. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to classify all property in the town of Situate at one. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Gentlemen, thank you very thank much. You. Thank, you. thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Moving on to a discussion on a vote on new licenses. And the first one uh, would be B&C Restaurants doing business as Riva Pizzeria, 765 Country Way. If you could come on up, Jay. <clears throat> Just briefly explain to us what you're looking for, if you don't mind. Identify yourself first, if you hey, could. My name is uh, Jay Cole. 
from Tom Bombasi. Gentlemen, the, uh, thank you. Owners of Riva Restaurant in the Harbor as well as Riva Pizzeria. And we have um, just wanted to increase our business and offer takeout delivery pizza subs and salads, which we've been doing now for a little while. I guess this was more of a formality that was overlooked. So we're here right now to just, I guess, tie up the loose ends. Sure. Samples? <laughs> <laughs> Questions from the board? Right, so you're in North Situate, we are in North right Situate. next to the train that is correct. station area. Pizzas um, are great. From what pizzas I guess. are great. <laughs> Just kidding on that, yeah. by the way. Okay. More motion? Please. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a common vehicular's license to BNC Restaurants, DBA Riva Pizza, uh, Pizzeria, at 765 Country Way. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Say none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. Good Appreciate luck. It. Thank you. Good luck. Good Moving on to the next one, which is uh, Fanny Inc. doing business as Sam's on the Harbor, 146 Front Street. If you could just identify yourself, sir. My name is Mr. Kutulis. I, op I open a restaurant in Citro Harbor, Sam's on the Harbor. I'd like to require the lights to continue the business. Mm. Yep. Right. Sam's on the Harbor. Breakfast or lunch? That's no, or lunch. right? That's what yeah, you're looking right for at the Welsh Company? Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, right. Okay. Everything was approved. All the, the built-in department and everything. Everything was all the permits. So let's get a little promotion for you. So you're opening up, a, is it just for breakfast or breakfast is it for lunch. breakfast and lunch? lunch? Yes. Okay. And you're entering from the back of the, the of Welsh Company or is it the, the front? In the waterfront. In the, uh, in the water side. Okay. That's right next to the Chinese restaurant. How much seating do you have? Uh, 44. 44 seats? That's right. And what, what are your hours? Uh, six. Uh, the, actually, my house is 5 to 3, but I'm open 6 to 2. I own two other locations, one in Quincy, one in Hanson, and I had another location in Howe. So, so the hours are seven six, days a week from 6 to 2? Yes. They approved 5 to 3 from the planning board mm -hmm. we here right. before, but I'm open 6 to, six to 2 right now. Well, good, good. Other questions from the board? My only question, what time you opened? Oh, what Great. time you opened? Huh? Okay. Yes. Yeah. And what, <laughs> Sorry. Are you open yet? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you opened a couple weeks ago? A uh, week ago, Monday. A week ago, Monday. Good. Perfectly. Yeah. Congratulations. I didn't Thank know you. that. That's good to know. Thank you. Um, questions from the audience? Saying none. Entertain okay. a motion. Move the board selectman vote to grant a common vehicular's license to Fanny, DBA uh, Sam's on the Harbor, 146 Front Street. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. Thank you very much. Congratulations. All right. Moving on to Ellen DeLuca of 2 Richfield Road Extension, a Hawker Peddler's hot dog cart. DeLuca's here by chance? Mm. here. Okay. I'll tell you what. Why don't we uh, move on to the next agenda item? If they come, we can go back to this agenda item. My understanding is the next one um, is being withdrawn at this time, right? That's correct. Okay. Can I so, ask Kim a quick question sure. on that one? Yeah. Um, when th this license would be for next year, I the the hot dog cart. Yes. Okay. When do we? Is there a deadline that we have to get those in by? Like no. it, it can happen over the course of the year. It can. Renewals must take place uh, during the month of November or early December. Um, but uh, new licenses can come in at any time. Yeah. I guess my thought was that if we could get. Before we start granting them, it would be good to know how many we have in totality mm -hmm. so that we we understand what we're dealing with. So I didn't know if they were, if we could set like a deadline so that they all were done by a certain time so we could say, okay, 10 carts is reasonable, 20 carts is not reasonable for the town? Or I don't know what your thoughts are on that. The only thing is, is that, um, excuse me, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, you do have people that come up with great ideas yeah. um, in the spring, and they're like, oh, you know, I really like to you know, offer all these type of things, so I'd hate to, t you know, tell them. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't be set in stone, but at least we'd know what we're getting into, you know, with the base of 10 right. or 12 or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Uh, well, we can think about it. There's nothing. <laughs> Okay, moving on um, to agenda item five, a discussion vote on the Green Communities Policy and our town planner, Laura Harbottle. Would you please come up? Thank you. Hi, 
I Obviously, we got two policies you want us to take a look at, Laura. One happens to be the um, fuel efficient uh, vehicle policy and an energy reduction plan. Right. These are both part of the green communities application. The uh, zoning that was passed at town meeting, the solar uh, photovoltaic zoning bylaw, that was one part of it. The stretch code was another part of it. Um, and these are two pretty significant parts of it. Um, the energy reduction plan has to, um, to meet the state requirements, reduce the town's energy consumption by 20% over five years. I'm not an energy expert by any stretch of the imagination, so um, what I did was to lay out some rough direction for how that could be done, but I think what will really happen is Tricia and Al have the ESCO coming on board right. um, probably in the winter, and we can sub out you know, anything in here for anything that the ESCO comes up with that should be a higher priority. It looks as though that some of the – did you put, I assume, the um, energy reduction action plan together? Yeah. Um, it seems like you've identified, or at least the, the town has identified, a lot of potential pro – not problems, but certainly um, – areas that can be addressed to become more efficient um, and I know that's without doing the ESCO evaluation which is going to be a, a certainly significant and signif um, helpful for the town but um, it, well, it's it, the older buildings and um, some of the big buildings <coughs> the school buildings uh, particularly the high school and gates are, are big energy users just because they're so big town hall and also the uh, golf course I, I, I saw from this are significant energy users for their yeah, the golf course, um, I talked to Bob Sanderson a little bit about that, and um, he, for some reason, that didn't particularly surprise him. I guess he's been in that building enough. He knows how drafty it is, and um, he thought it just hadn't been insulated well. Um, so by, by passing this, then, this is going to help us for, obviously, potential grants to in order to rectify those deficiencies? Yeah, exactly. This gets the town into the Green Communities Program, which enables us to apply for grants probably in the neighborhood of 150,000. Um, that's what most of the other towns are. You get kind of what they give you. Um, they split up, you know, a certain number of million dollars among all the towns that have applied for it. One thing that you, you mentioned is that, <coughs> God bless, um, that um, we have to reduce it by 20 percent over five years. If we obviously enact this, which, you know, obviously I don't think Personally, I, yeah, I'm all for this. This is great. Is there a penalty in the event that we end up getting grants and we don't reduce it 20 percent with five years? Do you, is there anything no, along that line? No, they don't have any way to really enforce it. I mean, they'd like towns to really try to do it, but um, other people have asked the same question, and the answer is that there's really nothing that they can do. Uh, I mean, just looking at this building alone will probably give us 20 percent in five years if we do something with it, but I'm just curious. Questions from the board on the uh, energy reduction action plan? You asked this question. I don't know. Did you write this, or is this taken from a state guideline? How did um, how did we no, get the actual document? Well, they, they they had sort of a like a cookbook where they say, well, you you know, you do the baseline in this paragraph, and then you do um, the inventory in this paragraph. I mean, so you know, I used the cookbook, but. Um, but well, yeah. I think I think Laura's being modest. Yeah, Her and Maureen have spent the better part of three months putting this together, and since town meeting, the deadline is the 19th. So they, she's been killing herself and has done. Some I was going to say maybe some of the paragraphs, maybe, but all the detail in here are specific to buildings and um, and areas and different wells and what have you. So it looks like a lot of work went into it. So. Yeah, well, a lot of work was done by Maureen and also um, Paula Berry in the engineering department, just coming, getting all the numbers crunched into the software. Um, what they did was they took all the energy bills throughout the whole town and input them into some software that the state had. Uh, right. Kind of. Sean? Well, when I first read it over, I thought it, this was what we voted at town meeting. I was going to say, wow, that was real fast because you didn't sign it. So that was one of my questions that they had asked. I was very impressed with it looking it over. Will <clears throat> that ESCO company use this as a platform? Yes, it will That's be in our RFP because they need a threshold, too, to right. do some of their projections. That's so it's yeah. work that we'll use again. Yeah, that's, good. that's very good. Thank you. Anyone else? 
Questions from the audience? All right. Before we mo do motions, I'd like to go to the, um, the vehicle. Uh, Laura, if you could just address that to the um, fuel efficient vehicle policy. Yep. Um, obviously, um, the, the, the intent here is to try to get the town to become more green with the motor vehicles. Exclusive of this would be school buses, fire trucks, um, I think some of the heavy equipment are things from DPW, um, but primarily there seems to be like a, um, a scale of like vehicles to try to get them up to certain miles per gallon. Is that the whole yes. shift here? Yes, exactly. One question I had, and I'm not sure, Laura, you or even uh, Tricia to think about. I know with, we talked about this, I think Rick Murray mentioned it maybe three years ago, but um, when former town administrator was here, but school buses be using, I think it was, I want to say biofuels or something about trying to do that. Is that something that we could take a look into to try to sa have save cost um, just as a sure. thought? Sure, I mean, that um, doesn't have to be part of this, but um, if that's something that could be done and it was a way to, um, to save energy, I think you, know, you could definitely count that towards that 20% if, you know, if we could find a way to get it to work. Just one of the observations I had, Sean? It's Boston, City of Boston's already doing that now, and that's maybe more expensive to buy, but it's cleaner for the environment. And it's, this state is the first state that it's going to be mandatory that everyone in the state that uses distillates, heating oil, and diesel fuel have to use a certain percentage of biofuel. So that's, you'll be able to tell when you're behind one of those vehicles. It smells it great. It smells like French fries. French fries, yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Put those kids on the bus and, you know, uh, take right. them away. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to throw that in. Front. Anyone else? Yeah. All right. Um, do you want to add anything else, Laura, at all? Or? No, that's really it. Um, you know, there are the two separate parts of this that you know we both, you know, that you know you both, Need them both. would hopefully be able to sure. adopt. Entertain a motion. Move the, go ahead. Move the board of selectmen vote to accept the energy reduction action plan and adopt the fuel efficiency vehicle policy. Second. Second, Second. by Mr. Harris. Discussion. Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Laura, thank you very Thanks. much, and thank Maureen. I will. Thanks. Um, seeing it's 720, I'll tell you what. Um, we're supposed to start a hearing at 730. I wonder if we should skip over and go to um, agenda item 7. How about yeah. Yeah. What a discussion, vote, three items. Situate Fire Department. Chief Judge, could you come on up? Good evening. And uh, obviously... Um, if you could just briefly tell us. All right. Um, item number one was the um, intermunicipal agreement for the purchase of a, um, a 1987 dash pumper from Cohasset. Last year with our, I, we discussed this before, our, our truck down Humrock was, uh, was told they weren't going to get another inspection sticker the next year. But we, uh, we scraped it, cleaned it, painted it, greased it, and the guy came and gave us a sticker this year. So. And um, it's 14000 that I encumbered out of my last year's budget. Yep. So it's not going to cost me anything this year. It was, uh, I had extra money. So um, it's a beautiful truck. Their mechanic doesn't want to let it go. He thinks that's the best truck. They just bought a brand new one. He likes this one better than it. It's, uh, you know, it's been babied. It's been inside its whole life. You know, if you look at it, it looks like it's brand new. But, you know, like I said, it is 24 years old. So uh, I'm going to use that to replace. We have a um, like a 34-year-old truck that uh, I, I refuse to put another dime into. So we're just mm -hmm. going to get rid of that and replace it that truck with the the, the truck from Cohasset. And um, and then uh, like hopefully we can get a few more years out of it because <laughs> with the truck and truck, right. I'm not sure next year it's going every year it's just going to be a flip of the coin whether they're going to do it. Because just look like the poor design of the um, of the frame and the trucks. It's just how old is that uh, oil one? Oil A lot of oil trucks with the Fords, mm -hmm. and, and just the, the chassis just rots out of them. I know Hanover just had to take one out of service, and uh, another town in Bridgewater they they had to just take it out because. How old is that one? Just so that, that is people twenty-two know. years old. Okay. Like normally you get twenty-five years. Useful life. Truck, mm -hmm. You know, so you know we uh, you know I mean it, it's still a great truck. So you know I think we can get probably get a couple more years out of it. Okay. Hopefully, if the uh, state inspectors agree with us, that's the Hummerock truck. Yes, that's the so Hummerock truck. So you're you're but taking this one? No, leaving the one down at Hummerock. No, no, but you're replacing the one that we're per suggesting we purchase is replacing one that's 
right. worse than the Hummer Encore. Right. It's 34 years right. old. Right. It's just a, it's a money pit. And where does that one? That's at headquarters. That's, that's our second backup. We run three engines, and we have five of them. Like when there's a storm or we get busy, we, we run them all. So. Right. And for the price, that's great. It's a reasonable price. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Fourteen thousand dollars and being able to use it for the next hopefully twenty-five years. Oh no, or no, no, this, this, no. <laughs> no if we can I'm get, trying, um, Rick. I'm trying. Yeah. You know, no, but like use said, it for if we can get it through, you know, the twenty-five months right. at some point, hopefully. Yes, Sean. Sean, what, please. What's a new pumper worth? I'm, you know, a new one uh, priced out is four hundred thirty thousand. Just throw that out there. Fourteen, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not the cure-all. It's a No, little, no, I realize that in 87. Love, is, uh, you know, help us get through a couple of years. I don't have any trucks. And, uh, hopefully, like, the Hummerock truck will pass, and, uh, you know, right. we, we have a really good second backup truck. Maybe go ask and we'll have another one by then. Yeah. <laughs> you want a motion nice. that, Chairman, or do you want to wait all Frank, three? We'll do all three, maybe, if you okay. don't mind, because all three are very important. So the next one is a um, – um, Rick is – might as well explain it. All right, the, the, the second one is, is basically uh, formality. A, the acceptance of uh, Chapter 48, Section 59A, which is which is the uh, it's the uh, mutual aid agreement. It's basically stating that if we send people in the vehicles to another town, we are responsible for the people. So if something happens to them, it's on us. And the same is true with somebody, somebody comes to another town, town and they Correct. get hurt. Their town owns them, not yep. us. So. I think we, somewhere in the archives, this has probably been passed, but I think instead of uh, hanging, spending a week down the archives trying to find it, we just vote this in and that's have the supersede. Makes sense. Everything else. So it's, you know, it's just more of a bookkeeping, uh, housekeeping kind of thing. Yeah, like all the chiefs in uh, Plymouth County are going to get it signed. So, so we'll, we'll all be covered and we won't have to worry about any liability. With Makes sense to me. Um, questions from the board? On that one, and then the last one, which I, I'm sure we're all very happy to see, is an increase in a fee schedule, which I think is overdue based on your research, which right. I commend you on. Right. Um, yes. It's um. Well, if you have the numbers in front of you, like I did, I um, uh, I um, put out to all the chiefs, the surrounding areas that I wanted their fee schedules. I took the first eight, the no matter how they came in, and I just averaged them out, and the numbers are there in front of you. Yeah, and we're not being top of the list. We're we're being kind yeah, of like yeah. But like I said, we're not. You know, we're a l little little lower than the uh, the average. Uh, and, um, I, I have some numbers too, but I mean, the the big ones are really the, the um, all the burning permits. They're only five dollars. We're going to raise them to ten. But the uh, the smoke detector inspections, like a lot of towns charge fifty dollars for that. We've been charging fifteen. So I think moving that up to thirty dollars isn't an unfair thing to to ask. And uh, what else? And, uh, well, the uh, the fuel oil appliance. You know, that's um, we just raised that ten dollars. We do one hundred fifty of those a year. We do like four hundred smoke inspectors a year. But the rest of them, you know, we might do like eight tank truck inspections and like fifty accident reports. We don't. Uh, we don't have any permits for firing cannons, so. I was going to say that. <laughs> no, no, nobody's come in yet. <laughs> it seems that we were well below the average yes. beforehand, right. and it looks like what you did is you did the average, and then we even put our proposed below the average. Right. So all we're doing is getting up yeah. to about the average, yeah. but I, didn't, I don't think you put it above the average on any of them. No. I so, just thought all the fireworks, I went up a little bit, right. but there's only... Um, it's the carnival is the only one that comes in for a permit. For Other than that one, you kept all of them considerably right. lower than the average. Right. So. But there, are, there were a few towns that are considerably higher than the other ones, which raised the average up, too. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like Plymouth is very high in their fees. Um, Bridgewater, I believe, is high. No, it's, it's good. So, it's so good. these more indicative of the true average. If I threw out the high ones, you know, this would be more. So are we better. going to post this somewhere? Is this <laughs> What's the process for... Just letting the public know. Maybe we can, we can put, put it in the put paper. On the website. Yeah, we put it on the website. Yeah. Yeah. The fund of the fire. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any questions? Other Sean? If you want to make a motion. I just had a question. It really doesn't relate to this. Sure. If, if it, while Ricky's here. Can Any you, questions from the audience at all? Or Yes. When do the fees go into effect? 
<laughs> that was your wife who asked that question. She wants you on the hot seat. She must have needed a um, something. Uh, we put them into a bag. January 1? January 1. All right. Sounds good. Get those inspections sooner than later right. for those people. Get them all in. Um, entertain a motion. John. Or Sean, did you want to ask? Go ask now. All right. It just was while he's here, just I don't know what made me think of it. Could you bring us up to speed in your overtime budget? And oh, okay. Yeah. The, um, I don't know, I've heard it's, um, it's out of control, but um, actually it's, it's been consistent for the past few years. It's, this year it's, it's underfunded. So um, I'll give you the history. It was up in, um, for the FY10 budget, uh, Rick Agnew, he, he cut it by $70,000 and added another $53,000 on uh, through the, um, the CBA with the union and it was unfunded so that was just coming out of it but he was going to use the two salaries that that were were unfilled to take that money and use it towards the overtime because having the uh, the unfilled positions creates more Funny. overtime so we were taking that but uh this year uh, we were waiting to see with Tricia to uh, see what the state was going to give us back for uh, local aid and it, it fell short I did get like fourteen thousand dollars extra, but uh, I, I'm still basically a hundred thousand short from the, where I was two years ago. And we uh, we have four shifts with we've, well, we're fully staffed with twelve people on each shift. We run at a minimum of ten, and that's the, I, I believe that is the least you can run the, the Citra Fire Department at a safe level. So if we get below 10, we, we hire for that position. And unfortunately, uh, Rick Agnew was big on, instead of giving you monetary uh, things in your contract, he'd like to give you time off. And now it's, it's biting us because, you know, now these people are all you know, accumulating this time and using it, creating more overtime. So um, I have been, uh, been, I started running a second ambulance it's uh, in, I had done like research on all the other towns that come in and how many times they take people to the hospital. It was about 200,000 in billable uh, revenue that we were missing out on. So since we've run it for six weeks, we've built out like $30,000 in wow. six weeks. But I, you know, and I, I, I might have to come back at the end because I, I need 10 people to run it to do it, run two ambulances. If I go below that, I can't do it. Okay. And for a, a short amount of money, I could I could bring a lot of more money back into the town. But you know, like I said with um, we're um, down into about fifty percent after like four and a half months. But the, the in the summertime vacation spike, a lot of people take time off for the summertime. That's usually our highest point, and we hit it kind of hard at the um, during the holidays. Okay. But after January, hopefully. It will go down because actually we had another guy retire, so hopefully I can use his salary towards the overtime. But unfortunately, you know his empty position is creating more overtime. Right. So, uh, well, I'm keeping an eye on it, and we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, motion, please. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to support the munis the intermunicipal agreement for the purchase of a 1987 Pierce dash pumper from Cohasset and to execute the corresponding document? Second. Seconded by Mr. Norton. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Second motion? Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to accept MGL Chapter 48, Section 59A, Mutual Aid, and to execute the corresponding document. Second. Second by Mr. Norton. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Finally, move that the Board of Selectmen vote to support the proposed fee schedule for permits as submitted by the Fire Chief. And a second. Second by Mr. Norton. Discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Okay, thank you Chief, very thank you very much. Um, moving on back to um, agenda item number six, which is a public hearing on the Sewer Betterment Division of 18 Lincoln Ave. 37 Moreland Road, time being 7.31 for a 7.30 public hearing. And on behalf of the applicant, Attorney Sullivan, welcome Good again. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman, members of the Board of Selectmen. On behalf of the uh, property owners, Mr. and Mrs. <coughs> Rick Bell, 
who own the property at 18 Lincoln Ave. I'm Brian Sullivan, and the reason that we are here this evening is to uh, ask for the selectmen to sign a release of the sewer betterment for 18 Lincoln Ave as it pertains to land that used to be a part of 18 Lincoln Ave that is now a separate lot on which there is a dwelling. Uh, chronologically, what took place, the Bells bought their home at 18 Lincoln uh, in 1994, and when they bought their house, uh, the house, it was an existing house with uh, approximately 20,000 square feet of land. Um, sewer came by in about 2006, and 18 Lincoln Ave was connected to sewer at that time, and the Bells were assessed a sewer betterment of uh, $18,650, and the Bells had been paying that for their single family home at that time. Um, although they had this land, they were not sure if they had uh, a buildable lot because of, uh, you know, dimensionally they weren't sure if they'd have enough width, et cetera. Uh, in March of 2010, uh, after the property was surveyed, they had a Form A plan approved creating a second buildable lot. That lot was then put under agreement. Uh, in April, the prospective buyer, Peter Zaccardi, sought and obtained a building permit to construct a single family home. In May, that lot was then sold. Now, that extra lot of land was still encumbered by the sewer betterment for 18 Lincoln, although it had its own street address now as 37 Moreland. Zaccardi constructed his single family home and he will be paying a sewer privilege fee, which is separate and distinct from a betterment. The sewer privilege fee that Zaccardi will be paying, according to the DPW, if he pays it this year, it'll be about 14,000 and change, and it drops to the high 13,000s if he pays it in 2011. He will not be able to obtain a certificate of occupancy until that privilege fee has been obtained. But it is connected to sewer, and it, because he, he will be assessed that privilege fee for 37 Moreland, it does not make sense, and I believe it is contrary to the law that he is still encumbered by the sewer uh, betterment that pertained to 18 Lincoln. So we're asking that the 18 Lincoln betterment be released or discharged uh, as it pertains to the land that is now 37 Moreland. Just a question. So in other words, the betterment that's been assessed to 18 Lincoln still will remain in, as far as the amount that needs to be paid by the, by the Bells? That's correct. And the only thing you're looking for is just the release on 37 Moreland property? Correct. No allocation whatsoever between the two properties with respect to that betterment. That's correct. Okay. So are you asking that they be relieved to pay anything? No. no. The, the no. 18 Lincoln right. is still connected. They owe about 16,000 right. according right. to the uh, treasurer collector. Right. They've made all of their payments consistently mm -hmm. and will continue to make those payments. Okay. We're not asking that that be forgiven or discharged or anything as it pertains to 18 Lincoln. All right. Now we're talking about the new lot. Correct. They're going to pay a privilege fee. They're going to pay of, of 14, 14, 13, 14, $14,000. Why don't they pay the 18 6 Because sewer came by in 2006, but they're not connecting until 2010. So according to, I think it's Wesson and Sampson, they've prorated the amount of the privilege fee. It's no longer a betterment. Now it's a privilege. Wait 10 years and pay even less. That doesn't make sense. It's the way we do it. Right. Yeah. I know, but just well, that. If, if that's it, that's uh, if that's it, uh, that's simple. Means so just, you want us to make a motion just separating the two properties from the betterment, so that the betterment sticks with <laughs> eighteen <laughs> instead of thirty-seven. Yeah, he wants he wants to make sure that the the betterment that right now is um, attached to the, attached to um, the, 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 the subdivided 37 Moreland is taken off that and sticks to the original home. That's exactly so it. How do we do that? I think there's a proposed motion. motion here. Is there a proposed motion? Yeah. Where is it? I got it. Yeah, go ahead. I'll try. Um, I move that the board approve and execute the notice of division of land assessed agreement pursuant to chapter uh, to Mass General Law Chapter 80 Section 15 and Mass General Law Chapter 83 <coughs> Section 28 by dividing said assessment or the amount thereof 
remaining unpaid as per the attached schedule from the town treasurer and the costs and interest accrued thereon among said 18 Lincoln Avenue and 37 Moreland Road and further that said agreement be filed with the Plymouth County Register of Deeds. Second. Um, let me see if I understand what I read. Let me, let me just get into discussion. It says among yeah. 18. I think it should say should be 218 Lincoln Ave I, as opposed to among. I'm dividing said assessment. You have this I don't. Um, just to be, if, may I? Sure. Um, there's, yeah, there's no, there would be no monies to be paid other than the cost of recording the discharge. So the, what the, the relevant portion of uh, 80 section 15 states is the, uh, it should be allocated the portion, uh, the portion that is being discharged, how it was improved by the betterment. And my uh, argument would be, this is, I'm sure you got a copy of the memo from DOR, but it says, uh, in making the division, the board assesses upon each parcel the part of the original assessment remaining unpaid proportion to the special benefit received by such parcel from the improvement. And the extra land was not benefited whatsoever by the sewer connection at 18 Lincoln. That ran to the house that was there, and that remains. Right. Now, you're the attorney for the yes. original homeowners. Correct. So they, I mean, I can see where they may think that some of it should be assessed to the other one, but if they don't feel that way, then I don't think we should. Let's go with it. Right. All right, that's our, I, our, you know, our position should just be that it's fair and what we do here tonight we do to anyone else that might be coming before us down the line. Right, correct. I think I agree with John, though, that among is a little bit, what would you change it to? I would just say that the uh, treasures and the costs and interest accrued thereon um, be, um, for lack of a better way, placed or would be... Um, um, uh, 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 Ryan, help me. What's the what's the what's the Bell's house? Is that eighteen or is 18. it thirty-seven? Okay, it's eighteen um, would be would be assessed assessed to against assessed to eighteen Lincoln Ave. That's it, and delete and thirty-seven Moreland Road. Damn it. Yes, just so I can Sorry. bring it down to the lowest common. We will be getting the remaining betterment from Lincoln Road. The whatever's left. Correct. That's sixteen thousand, and that will continue to come in. We will also be getting a. Uh, Privilege fee from the new home, Mr. Zarkadi. Correct. Home, for thirteen eight or fourteen thousand, whatever it is. Correct. Exactly. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. So the board has to um, amend that amend sentence. The agreement that's included for you to execute, since the motion follows what the right. wordage is. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to move to amend. To did we second? Yeah, we did. So yeah. just somebody. So move to amend your motion. Previous motion. By I'll second that. Yeah, we'll have to vote on your amendment. But to, but to move to amend to um, to state um, after thereon um, put assessed against 18 Lincoln Ave and delete the words and 13 Moreland or 37 Moreland Road. That's what the motion should read. Does that make sense, Kim? <laughs> I'll read it to you. Should say that the, after the cost and interest accrued thereon uh, as assessed against 18 Lincoln Ave. And then delete and 37 Moreland Road. Yes, got it. Who wants the second Tony's motion? I'll that was second yes. Tony's motion. Seconded by Mr. Norton. Discussion. Saying none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Mr. Sullivan, thank you. It's a pleasure as always. Um, moving on. Let's see here. I guess we're moving on to uh, agenda item eight, which is a presentation on the hazard uh, mitigation plan. MAPC. If you could identify yourself, please. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Chairman, members of the board. My name is James Fries. I'm a regional planner with Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Welcome. Uh, thank you. I believe uh, each of you have a copy of the presentation that I'm uh, giving tonight. Yes. Um, so I'm working with 10 South Shore communities, including Situate, uh, to update hazard mitigation plans that were adopted in 2005. Just briefly, uh, many of you are probably familiar with the idea of hazard mitigation, but it's generally long-range strategies intended to reduce or eliminate the loss of life or property associated with hazard events. Uh, 
This, this plan focuses on natural hazard events. So we're talking about flooding, hurricanes, earthquakes, those types of, of natural hazards. And I want to emphasize that this is not an emergency response plan. That is, we're not looking at actions to be taken during or immediately after a hazard event, but again, we're looking at long-range strategies that will reduce the town's vulnerability to those events. So beyond the public benefit, the obvious public benefit to doing one of these plans, uh, there's the, the, the other reason that we do these plans is the Disaster Mitigation Act of 2000, passed by the U.S. Congress, that encourages pre-disaster mitigation planning uh, that integrates state and local planning. Um, these plans are FEMA, th these plans must be approved by FEMA and updated on a five-year basis. They make the town eligible for uh, FEMA's ha uh, hazard mitigation grant program. It's a, a particular significance to situate because you guys make regular use of that fund for elevation grant funds and all of that. And we'll talk a little bit about the process towards the end of this presentation that we go through to complete this plan. But the important thing to remember, of course, is that this plan is necessary to be able to, to be eligible for those funds. So MAPC engages in what's generally a six-step process, uh, as outlined by FEMA, um, to complete these plans. Uh, we're in the final steps of that process, and I believe you all received a copy of, of our final draft of the plan and had an opportunity to review that. I want to emphasize as well that public input is strongly encouraged within this process uh, so that we can hear directly from the community what types of what, what they're experiencing in terms of hazards flooding and those types of things and any ideas they may have on um, addressing those uh, problems when we work with the town we're working specifically with a local hazard mitigation committee in situate that was composed of members of the planning fire dpw building public health and conservation commission um, and so the, the very first step we take is to try and understand where the hazards essentially occur within the town. So we look at FEMA's floodplain maps um, or, or similar. We look at state data as far as where tornadoes or, or uh, earthquakes have occurred within the state. In fact, Situate's one of the few communities I've ever worked with that actually did have a tornado uh, relatively recently. Uh, and then we, um, we look at critical facilities and, and other uh, factors within the town in relation to those uh, hazard areas and uh, assess the potential for damage. The, um, on the third page, the middle slide is a, a close-up of, of the map that we produce that takes locally identified flood areas. These are areas that our local hazard mitigation planning committee have identified where we know flooding actually occurs, uh, overlays it with uh, our critical infrastructure sites, repetitive loss properties, which are properties that have experienced uh, or have uh, used f the National Flood Insurance Program more than twice. Um, so they basically have a history of flooding and, um, and, other, and other factors. The full version of that map is, is up here on the wall and I encourage you when you have the opportunity to take a look at it and see, uh, see the kind of information that we're looking at when we do, when we do this planning. The next thing we look at is what existing mitigation measures the town is already engaged in. And Situate, with its history of, uh, of flood and, and coastal hazards, has done a lot already, more than just about any other town I've worked with. Uh, you have a floodplain zoning districts. You're doing the structural elevation grants. Um, you're, you guys are already doing a, a number of things. As we go into the planning process, though, we, we and develop mitigation strategies, we start to try and identify, are there any gaps in what you guys are already doing? Um, are there additional actions that could be taken that would further reduce vulnerability? And then we prioritize those actions that we identify. Uh, in this process as well, because it's an update, we look at the actions that were taken in the, two th or were identified in the 2005 plan, and we um, uh, assess them as to whether they've been completed or should be carried forward into this planning process, and we reprioritize them amongst the other actions that have been identified. Um, so there's a list that on the fourth page in the middle slide, you see a list of just a sample of some of those actions that were identified in this process. Uh, continuing to elevate homes and utilities, it's been a very successful program so far and should definitely be continued. Uh, implementation of the Peggotty Beach uh, plan, uh, there's some a lot of very good recommendations for an area that's seriously impacted by uh, flooding and, and coastal storm events. Um, uh, the development of a coastal management plan that would 
try and do a lot of what has been done in the Peggotty Beach plan and, and apply it to the entire situate coastline, um, probably at a less fine grain scale. Uh, and then finally, a low priority item included here as an example is control of Phragmites. Um, those actually present a wildfire hazard and in many cases are actually quite close to homes that are um, uh, close to wetlands and those types of things. So the uh, process going forward from here, um, uh, this is the second of two public meetings that we conduct and we're, I'm recommending that the plan be uh, once again posted on the website of the town's website for about a two week period for, to invite uh, additional public comment uh, and then we submit it to MEMA, the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency. They approve the plan and forward it on to FEMA. FEMA takes a little bit longer but then they approve the plan. Uh, uh, their, their approval of the plan is conditional. Uh, it's conditioned on the town adopting the plan uh, after FEMA's basically offered their approval. <coughs> adoption, all we need is an adoption from the Board of Selectmen. So this would come back to you probably sometime in the spring uh, depending on how fast FEMA moves it through. And then once that's been done, issue, uh, FEMA issues the final approval and then you guys are eligible again for the uh, hazard mitigation grant program. You get, there is an application already in the queue with FEMA for the elevation program for the upcoming year. Um, so it is very important that we move this plan quickly and we'll be talking to FEMA to make sure they understand it move, needs to move quickly so that when that grant award is made, presuming it is, the plan is there and you guys are fully eligible. Um, and, and again, th then implementation of the plan is of course a local, primarily a local responsibility and you guys call on FEMA uh, funds um, and other sources of funds to implement the plan um, according to your own schedule. Uh, again, the plan has to be updated every five years, so we recommend thinking about that about year four or so and getting ready for the next year. So with that, I'm uh, happy to take any questions or comments you guys might have. Sean? The only question I might have was the what, elevating the homes. Has that amount increased at all? I, I remember, I think it was Joan Francis that was instrumental in getting that to the town. It, it was it Joe? Correct me if I'm mistaken. Twenty thousand dollars was a cap. Has that been raised at all? It was. It's been quite a while. I, I'm unfortunately I'm not uh, as familiar with right. with that aspect of it. Um, that would, I know I, that's I, been. I defer that question to your local, the person right. who's locally just, managing that program. And so popular. That's all. That, that's all. Right. Joe. Just a matter of clarification. The the recent tornado. I think uh, for people to think it might have happened last week and they missed it, uh, <laughs> it was years ago, I believe. I mean, it was recent in terms of, of, of American history, but right, it really right. wasn't uh, recent. Recent in the overall scan, overall span big of picture. Just so people yes. <laughs> aren't wondering how they, whether they slept through it or not. <laughs> and it was a very small tornado. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Tony? No. No. <laughs> Good. So, Mr. Fries, that's excellent. I know that you don't need a vote from us tonight. We'll be waiting for it to come back in the spring. And certainly um, more comment from people. Um, take a look at it on the website. If you have any comments, please add to it. Um, it's a very important document. Good. Great. Thank, Thank you, you very Thank much. You. I Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you for your work on this. Thank you. Uh, moving on to agenda item number nine. It's a discussion vote for the uh, fiscal year 12 budget calendar. And already. Oh boy. Didn't we just do this? <laughs> um, Tricia, did you want to address this at all? Uh? Yes, um, please. So um, this is the second year you've seen this sort of um, comprehensive chronology of how the budget, both capital and operating rollout, tied to the requirements of the charter and the requirements of the town bylaws and state law. Um, there are no changes from um, last year. Um, budgets are due to me, then I present them to you, and then you have a parade of various departments and boards come before you, and then they roll to advisory, and then they roll to the capital. I do want to take a few minutes to talk about the capital planning process since the new operating budget process uh, was put in place last year. We're making some changes to the capital planning. One is we've changed the night that the capital planning committee meets. 
typically they sort of met at 6 o'clock right before your selectmen's meeting, and there was just not enough time to, I think, devote to the thorough review some departments required. So um, Eric has agreed as chair of that committee to move it to um, Wednesday nights. So you'll have capital on Wednesday, you on Tuesday, capitals on Wednesday, advisory on Thursday. You meet every other week, whereas advisory and capital can meet more frequently. So um, we can fit everybody in. That's at 6 or 7. When do they meet? Um, <coughs> uh, I believe they'll meet at 7. 7. Yes, 7 okay. on Wednesdays. So I do want in your packet you have um, some new instructions really for the capital budgeting process. Because you had a capital program in place for last year, I focused my efforts my first year here on the operating budget. As you knew, we overhauled that and retooled it. The charter um, in a few places is very clear that the town administrator submits a operating and capital budget to the board that projects out for five years. So we changed the forms for capital. We've handed out these instructions to department heads um, in the process, and these budgets are um, capital budgets are due next week to me. There is a rating process contained in your packet to um, on some objective criteria over five major policy areas in which to rate each capital request. This is not my system. It's actually a nationwide system that's employed in. Um, many, many municipalities, counties, and agencies throughout the United States. It's a pretty standard rating formula, and if you Google it, you'll find it pretty quickly. And as you can see, um, it looks at those criteria and then assigns a weight to them, a relative weight. So when I receive the capital request from everyone, I will um, employ this process for each request, put it into an access database, and use that as the basis for relative priority. I want to be clear, though, that I'm only step number one in a five-step process because I just present a recommended operating capital budget to the board. You review it. Capital planning is reviewing it. The advisory committee is reviewing it. And finally, town meeting is reviewing and adopting it. So um, instead of trying to reach some conclusions about this process right before you need to vote everything finally in April and get the warrant done, it's going to be like your operating budget where you'll get a balanced budget, which, you know, won't be everything everybody wants, but I'm required to submit a balanced budget to the board and you will receive a balanced budget. Um, I met with Eric about this this morning while I was um, showing folks through the surplus equipment at Pier 44. He came down and met me. Um, he's very supportive of this process. The school committee last night actually voted their capital budget to submit. I attended that meeting. And so I think we're already off on a good track. But again, uh, I don't want it construed as being, you know, my plan or whatever. The other big chunk of this that's missing is how it's financed, because that's been the second challenge. And um, the way that this will flush out is the town retires a certain amount of debt each year. There's a certain amount of debt that's through the enterprise funds or debt excluded debt. Um, and the plan would be to um, capture some of the retiring debt and not let that go back into the re general fund. It's also to use some free cash for capital. It's also to regularly bond for capital. Um, historically, because the town's funds for a variety of reasons have been limited, we've mostly been concentrating on enterprise fund debt, or like we'll do in March when we float this bond, the Wampatuck school debt exclusion. But part of the operating revenue of the town will be recommended for capital. Um, the capital budget needs to run concurrent with the operating budget and needs to be funded. And I think we're seeing the effects where, you know, Chief is coming in for a ladder, a pumper, and an ambulance. And those four items alone are over $1.7 million. And so we really need to begin to address that. So a little different, but um, more work this first year. But um, hopefully departments are doing a new five-year rolling 
once it's in that database, they'll only have to do an update, so they won't have to constantly re-update it. And we'll see how it goes. So I'm happy to answer any questions. The board? Just one, uh, I'm the liaison for, for that uh, committee, and I find that every year we put in a lot of time and energy um, with really not a lot of um, um, productivity at the end. So is there any way to, and it seems like you're doing this, you're going to kind of manage the process to a point before you bring in a group of six people to look at a bunch of stuff for several weeks and, and you know, hundreds of hours to find out that none of it's really going to come to fruition. So how can we make it more productive without going through all those steps? Um, well, the hopeful thing this year is that I'll have identified the available funds for capital at the get-go. So even though, and your job will be, you know, I'll come up with some recommendations, but if there's 10 priority one projects and the financing that I show is available only allows us to do three, then those are the hard choices we have. But I guess the best way to answer your question, Tony, is we'll have the funding discussion at the same time as we have you know, before we begin the review of what's yeah. needed. I guess part of my question is, you know, last year every department came in and discussed with the board all of their issues. And are you going to are you going to take some of that on so that it's more of a it's already been discussed to that point so you're coming to the board to the committee with with the target items as opposed to discussing everything under the sun? The committee will get all the requests and then they'll show, because I will rate every request. Right. And then based on the criteria, it, they'll show what's priority one, priority two. So if there's five or six priority ones, I will probably be only be recommending you know, two or whatever, depending on the funding scheme. And that's when the discussion kicks in with the board and committee. I mean, Eric and I had that discussion today um, because he believes that um, the impact on service to the public should be weighted higher than, say, a legal mandate or whatever. So those are the kind of discussions the capital planning will have when they, they look at the relative priorities. But I, I see all the capital because I meet with everybody one-on-one -on -one when they submit their operating budget right. and tell them what I'm cutting or what I can give them. Um, so there'll still be a little of that, but hopefully before they go through meeting with everybody, they'll know how much money we have to play with up front instead of trying to say, how do we do it? Um, and that's going to be the real change, I think, is what the source of funds are coming from that might result in less operating general fund because some of it might be dedicated to capital. And then just I'll say one more thing to make it a little clearer, and I'll have stuff for you at this next meeting. So what you're doing is you're regularly taking a percentage of the town's total revenue operating revenue and say it's roughly going to be two or three percent and that every year is going to be dedicated to capital instead of trying to carve out capital after you already tried to satisfy your operating needs you're taking it as part of the overall budget and you're saying well we've got this much of money two percent is our threshold or three percent for capital each year some of that's retired debt or whatever but that's the way to start funding it every year and you're bonding and whatever and remember whatever you approve in FY12 we're not incurring as an actual cost till FY13. So it's to capture that retiring debt and also weave in some new debt or whatever. Well, obviously the problem there is where, where you're going to get that 2 or 3% is going to be out of department budgets when all the departments are underfunded now. That's, so yep. that's, that's the challenge. That's the challenge. But it might not be a, be a pretty picture, but it will be a completely painted picture to see what we have to do if we really want to start to be serious about capital and you know just from the school discussion last night um, about their needs with buses and vans and security issues that they would really like to move forward on and other things we're talking about such as Gates School you know we have some hard choices to make and some of them might be just going to town meeting and asking voters to take on some additional general fund debt to do that because that's really what it's a function of and how we support those P&I payments over the term out of the general fund. And this kind of brings us full circle back to item number one. We have the lowest tax rate in our community, in, in our area, because we don't do that. We've never done that. We've always said 
we're going to capital has always been lowest. We we've we've always worked on the general fund and taken whatever was left over and mostly did it with the retiring debt to continue the capital plan, and um, and our surrounding communities haven't necessarily done that. So yeah, and I think that's going to be probably in you know I think 14 to 18 months. We still sort of have all these things that are going to um, converge at the same time. You're going to have the ESCO study done that tells you how much money you're going to need to put into all your public buildings to make them energy efficient and what those savings will be. And you'll have, hopefully, this feasibility study done for Gates that will definitively say, is it adaptive reuse? Do, does this much money make it this? Does this money, or is it just a historical facade that we want to maintain for community preservation? And so, you know, then we'll get the, have to make the decisions of, you know, do we put $2 million into this building for energy improvements because we're losing 250000 a year out the inefficient windows? Do, and, and then we'll also know about <coughs> the in terms of what it's going to cost to make that building hum. And then the feasibility study will say, well, this is what it's good for, this is what it's structurally whatever. So that's all going to come together, you know, next year, hopefully. And then we'll have some decisions to make, I think. Yeah. And those are completely separate problems than the school issues with their budget, the town's issues with their budgets. You know, obviously this has a negative impact on that. Other questions? <clears throat> Tricia, thank you. You need to vote that as per the. So, I'll entertain a motion. Will the board of selectmen vote to accept the fiscal year 12 budget calendar? Second. Seconded by Mr. Norton. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. <coughs> all right. Moving on to agenda item number uh, 10. It's an accept of the resignation of the Conservation Commission. Motion, Mr. Chairman. Please. Move the board of selectmen vote to accept the resignation of Stephen Bajorklin from the Conservation Commission. And further, the board thank Mr. Bajorklin for his years of service to town in the commission. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Moving on to agenda item number 11. Um, this again was an update in the towns of Situate's 375th anniversary celebration. Mr. Norton had asked about this about a month ago. I asked to put it on one more time. I think the reason was I wanted to be able to say we should probably, if, and I don't know if we did this last time, if people are interested, and I know people have been, they should um, uh, contact the selectman's office mm. to ask to be put on. Um, to, to, to join this committee for the town's 375th anniversary to get together to start discussing what, uh, what we as a town should be thinking about doing going forward for next year, whether to um, have one event, multiple events, whether it should be spread on one weekend in conjunction with Heritage Day or separate or part or part of, um, whether to discuss it should be dealt individually with the town of Situate, South Situate, or uh, Norwell, I guess. And, in Hanover or whatnot. So I was hoping to put it on the agenda for the purposes of, again, saying I think if, if the other board members had some comments or some uh, thoughts, we should um, try to close that loop, I'd like to say, within the next 30 days to get people together before the holidays so that they could talk and then get together after the holidays because time seems to be flying pretty quickly into the new year. Mr. Norton. Just, just a comment, uh, Mr. Chairman, that you know there is probably a drop dead date on this and unless we have some uh, citizen interest, a community interest, a organizational interest before uh, another month or so, you know, it may be almost too late to do anything. And that's, I uh, just want to, you know, p some people think if we have an, uh, an event next summer, they can start planning in May, and that's not quite the case. So, I mean, it, uh, there is interest out there. I know there's interest out there. People have mentioned it to me. But uh, people really have to come forward. Our organizations have to come forward. This doesn't have to be a, you know, uh, Macy's Thanksgiving Day parade. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's going to be just some acknowledgement that the town's been here for 375 years, whether that's in the form of a, a dinner maybe or a, a, uh, an enactment of some sort, whatever. But I just want to make that clear. Thank you. Kim, what's our schedule? I know do we have in December. Are we meeting every... Every Tuesday. The 7th, the 14th, and the 21st right now. Oh, yeah. Okay. So three in a row. I would probably then propose that um, our next meeting is the 7th, right? Mm -hmm. So applications in by the 14th, decision for our meeting on the 14th. Would that make sense? Application? You mean 
uh, from Interest. people who want to, who are interested in doing it. And we'd select it on the 14th or put them all on, whatever. Um, Do you want to charge or anything, John? Um, I suppose we probably should, right? Can you get us a charge together? Yes, but in between for a all much those other lower things. <laughs> uh, um, I did put a CPC request in for the 370th fifth anniversary. We attached Hingham's program. I was in an antique shop last weekend in Athol and saw the 1936 program that Situate put together for the. 200th That was a good one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the picture was in a joke. So, 300. Um, so um, perhaps in April, obviously, there might be some funds available for okay. the CPC okay. if it's successfully funded to help uh, any committee that comes together. Good. Thank you. Smart thinking. Um, all right, good. That was all I wanted to say on that. Um, any other questions from the board? Fair enough. Moving on to the next uh, agenda item, which is other business. Anyone? No. Anyone? Just a couple of quick things. Uh, it's the winter recreation uh, sign-ups registration this Saturday, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. at the high school. Just wanted to throw that out there. Tony was probably going to mention it. Usually does the sports. Um, <coughs> Trisha, when you went to Pier 44, what, today? Yes, sir. Did you bring the committee before you who'd you bring no, it was the viewing of for the people who want to bid on the equipment all right okay it was, that's today and tomorrow the bid opening is Friday the first meeting of the committee is November 29th at 6 o'clock at Pier 44 how was the turnout for the viewing we had 10 people today oh good any other Sean she can read minds mm -hmm. that was my name <laughs> so November 29th 6 p.m. That's Monday. Yep. Thank you. That's it. Tony? I guess I'll give a quick sports update. As, uh, <laughs> um, high school football. Uh, high school football team won their conference, and they're in the playoffs for the first time in a while, I think. And they play the playoffs after th the Thanksgiving game. Um, youth football. Uh, our third grade, fifth grade, and eighth grade made it to their Super Bowls, and the eighth grade won their Super Bowl. Um, the third and fifth uh, lost in very good games. But overall, a great successful program for a, for our little town of Situate. Um, little League had registration, and if you missed it, there'll be another one in January. Thank you, Joe. Nope. Me neither. Next time. Um, correspondence. Seeing any? No, there aren't any. Uh, moving on to minutes. Who the minutes of August twenty fifth, two thousand and nine. November 2nd, 2010, November 3rd, 2010, and finally November 8th, 2010. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Um, Norton. I just want to have a discussion. I want to thank you, Kim. You know, doing these minutes are extremely difficult. You know, we're very fortunate. She's, uh, oh, you know, a ton of uh, things that um, Kim Donovan does for this, for this board and for this town. And she takes copious notes that she types in. And it's never easy, you know, when we are all so verbose and we like to hear ourselves and talk an awful lot. Um, she takes down a lot of information, and I have to say it's not easy because she takes her notes and then, you know, she does this on her own. She takes it home. It's not just at work. So, um, you know, doing these, whether it's just recent or whether they've been in the past, she's always diligent about doing it, and they're very thorough. So I just wanted to take that out and say thank you, Kim. Um, we sound smarter in the minutes, too. I know. That's <laughs> what I like. Um, again, I just want to make sure you, you, you people in town should appreciate that. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Um, moving on to agenda item number 15, which is uh, pending litigation and labor negotiations, um, non-union as well as uh, into executive session. Again, we, we need to go into executive session to discuss these items, folks. If we were to discuss them in open uh, meeting, it uh, would have a detrimental effect for obviously for the obvious reasons. So uh, roll call vote, please. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Good night, folks. Thank you. Happy holiday.